Everybody and welcome to a very special uh, Toy Wizards Power Rangers uh, Fan Fest update. Is that that's a good way to put it? Mm-hmm. This is a, a nice update to the reviews reviews that you did at the uh, Fan Fest event, which was incredible for a virtual event. I have not seen that much. Uh, time and effort put into uh, it looked like a real convention. Like I maybe couldn't go to Vegas and I was watching it on TV. That's what it looked like to me. Well, we're really glad that you enjoyed it. We we put a lot of effort into it, and you know, with today's realities, it's it's a great way for us to still connect with fans and get out there and talk to everybody about the stuff we're working on and the stuff we're excited to get out there. You know, a lot of people don't get to go to the convention, so often they may only see a panel from maybe a shaky hand cam (laughs) or 10 seconds of video footage. And this really gave everyone to see what the panels would be like at Mm -hmm. Comic-Con if you had a good seat, you know? Like, um, that's not even the case most of the time. You can't even get into the panel that you want. And here you had a panel that was open to everybody all day long. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how we're going to have to re-examine how we approach sort of conventions, I think, going forward in general. Even after we get past these initial lockdowns from COVID and the effects from that, how do we do sort of a virtualization of even live conventions going forward? Yeah, I mean, it definitely makes me rethink how I'm going to handle some of my stuff. Absolutely. Um, certainly, I don't have the uh, the budget of Hasbro, but uh, <laughs> you know we're uh, still looking forward to Power Morphicon this year. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I haven't had a chance to go to Power Morphicon, and I have to say your your mustache looks even more legendary now that I see it. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's uh it's my authority mustache. That's great. <laughs> well, you know Morphicon this year with COVID, we're going to do a virtual event. Uh, it won't be as nice as Hasbro Fan Fest. But uh, we are going to do a, a virtual event in June. And then the, the real show where everybody gets together will be next year in August back in Pasadena, California. And we're really expecting that just to be fantastic. It's, it's going to be the time that a lot of Power Ranger uh, fans all get together in one spot, especially after the delays of COVID. And I think it's going to make a really good party and everyone's going to be excited. I'm excited. It's you know, there's no as as cool it as it is it is to have a chance to see um, things in a first hand uh, like you're right there in in a great seat watching a video or seeing seeing um, guest guest stars or whatever in this type of environment. There's no substitute for talking to people around a glass case and getting that personal connection. It's one of the things I love about San Diego Comic Con, and I'm looking forward to it. Power Marvel Con. Well, it, it, Power Marvel Con is is not as big as San Diego. But it is a, a big show. It's not a small show. It's a good size show. And every single person there, except for like, you know, Lisa's dad, is a Power Ranger fan. Like they're there for a purpose. They're there for a reason. And they're really, you can feel that energy where every single person you look at loves the same thing that you do. And that's what makes it so special. That's awesome. And speaking of special, you guys revealed some really special rangers at the fan fest event. Now we all got the pink ranger, metallic ranger early, 
And we thought, okay, well, that's a nice one shot. No, no one knew you were going to follow it up with more of the team. And that's really neat. And that was a really nice surprise for, for FanFest. Um, what made you guys think to go with the metallic glitter rangers that we're seeing? Well, I think it's an opportunity to pay tribute to one of the coolest moments of MMPR Season 3. You've got the awesome introduction of the Zeo Crystals. You've got the, um, it's a great way to take our characters and enhance them in a cool way without changing up their costumes or doing anything too drastically different. But it does give us an opportunity to evolve those portrait sculpts a little bit, introduce some, um, you know, because we're always growing and changing in, in design and in, um, in sculpting. And, and Corey was able to bring to life like a brand new um, helmet sculpt for the Red Ranger, which is pretty rad. And, and people then noticed that right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the small details. And Loretta um, had an incredible, she did an incredible job bringing to life the perfect mix of like glitter, clear plastic and pearlescent materials. That is, believe it or not, unique on every single one of those different colored Rangers. Like the dark ones are different than like Aisha, who has like a different kind of look. Those are the mix of those different elements comes to life in a great way for the metallic rangers. And then, you know, all the zeal crystals actually glow in the dark too, which is even more amazing. Well, that's, that's <laughs> nice. And yeah. Whenever you, can, whenever you can add glow in the dark to anything, it's always such a bonus. Oh it, yeah, absolutely. It, especially especially as kid, crystals. As a kid, you wanted to look at your room and see what was glowing and you knew like, what toy that was and what toy that was because it was glowing. That's right. Um, the other really, really big announcement was the Red Sentry Ranger. And um, some people were caught unaware, some people didn't know, and other people were huge fans of that Dracon Timeline comic book that we got from Boom. And it really did explode the Power Rangers into a multiverse where you can go in several different directions with Power Rangers now and make your own new worlds. And one of those worlds was a dark world with a dark Tommy and the Sentry Rangers, which, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about getting, bringing that comic book page to life. You know, it's it's what's great about those Rangers is that they're just really cool looking costumes in and of themselves. So for a casual fan, being able to bring that Red Sentry to life, it allowed you to just, you know, if you don't know about the Boom Comics world of the coinless universe, like it's a great introduction. You know, you want it, you get it. You want to learn more about it. Plus, it's a truth builder. So you can have Dracon and, and you know, his squad of of guys behind him that are ready to like stand at attention and that's just really cool not to mention it allows us to open the door into a whole new um world of the coinless kind of um century collection you've got mastodon there's lots of other really cool ones out there that we could do um and and it's and that's one of the great things that loretta has done on this brand is she's able to um start to paint a picture where she, in some ways she's completing some collections she's opening the door for other collections and i think that's what's great about our hobby it allows us all to kind of like we come into it at a different stage and allows the collection to complete but also opens the door for new ones and i think you know it's just the tip of the iceberg you know the omega rangers are cool there's like there's a lot to there's a lot of cool stuff in those comic books and it's it's a uh, it's exciting to see it sell out and it means that like when you believe in like we believe in it we're fans but like when you see, you know, people lay down money and, and this, this thing sells really well, like it encourages us to take more chances and do those deep cuts. Cause that's, that's, you know, we love them too, but we, we also want to make sure we leverage it with things that are, um, you know, green Rangers and things like that, that we know the casual fan is going to like too. No, I, I, I'm really, I mean, obviously I'm really excited to see more, more of the centuries. Um, in fact, uh, until recently, I had those costumes in my uh, in my storage here in the backyard. I wow! Finally gave them, I finally gave them back to Jason David Frank like literally a month ago. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But they were like just sitting in boxes in my in my storage. I know how many fans were like, "Why aren't you displaying those?" I'm like, "Oh, they take up too much room." <laughs> Uh, That's I a big already, commitment having a costume. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I already have a uh, a monster in one of my rooms, and they're wow. big and they take up Dude. so much space. And uh, if you don't know, the costumes are made out of what's called foam latex. 
Oh yeah, degrades. I, I collect sneakers, and it's it's it, uh, the, it's, the it's a clock horrible, on those things. horrible thing about age, and so slowly <laughs> those costumes get brittle, and then they start flaking off. And uh, you think a cat shedding is bad? Wait till you get a monster suit that wants to shed. <laughs> uh, that's something else. But um, you did you did say Omega Rangers? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. I mean, there's there's so much out there to do. I think. So it's, what you're it's... telling me is that there's a chance. Well, there's always a chance. <laughs> I mean, it, it's we've we're, we've got 30 years of stuff to, to pay tribute to. Um, everybody's got their favorite season, you know. Wild and Ford. there's there's ways there's ways to bring elements of those things to life. And that's what was so cool about the Red Century is it 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 allows us to test the waters or something like that and you know if it's a success then let's you let's didn't test the waters them. you blew the waters out of the water <laughs> i mean it's Corey and loretta do an incredible job on the on, on these things and it's it's exciting to see that people believe because there's one thing if we like john and i believe and bridget believes like but when you when the fans believe and that then it becomes something bigger and the, and we're all you know as, as part of the rangerverse we're all in this together and and to see people get as excited about this stuff as we are, that's, well, no, I, that makes I, you want to take more chances. I yep. absolutely believe um, for for Power Morphicon, we had the first track on exclusive with Bandai. And I fought and fought and fought for that for a year and a half. They didn't want to make it. And I'm like, no, this world is popular. You got to do this. And then here you guys have held that torch up high and going, Oh no, we're not going to just give you one piece. We're going to build on that world. We're going to show you more of the coinless. We're going to hint at Omega Rangers. <laughs> you know, like that's the kind of stuff that's exciting because you know there is certainly, of course, Mighty Morphin always sells. You know, you got to always put out Mighty Morphin. Yeah, and we've got a big anniversary on the horizon, so there's. It's it's all about that balance. Like how how do we strike the right balance? Yeah, but and, and that balance so is important. much out there. I mean, there's so much with the Power Rangers universe. Um, I'm not going to name names, <laughs> Bulk and Skull stuff that needs to be made, and and hopefully we can get to it soon. Amen. Um, I I'm really happy with the with the announcement you guys made. I'm really happy that you're you're going off in such great creative uh, uh, directions and um, man that red century it just I, I just got chills again like my my <laughs> arm hairs are going up uh, just thinking like oh man I can't wait to you know have your drac on there and then have sentry guards behind it and you're just like that's that's gonna look so nice so, <laughs> uh, can't wait to see the diorama builders build out with that sentry figure flanking dracon in the back well, you know, that makes a great opportunity for you to do a box set with Dracon and Two Centuries, make that a nice big exclusive. Ah, I see that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. <laughs> Go ahead. That one's free. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with the amount of creativity and the amount of product you guys have been throwing for Power Rangers. Um, Hasbro has really shown a love for the franchise and a willingness to keep making product after product. And uh, like many collectors, I now have buckets and buckets of this stuff. And it's it's fantastic to see new stuff come out all the time. So, look at him. Uh, you know, it's connecting with our fans is what it's all about. And, and thank you. Thank you for everything that you do and trying to you know, bring people together, whether it's Power Morphicon or, or online. Um, you know, the, the more we get together and talk about our hobby and, and talk about what is exciting, what deep cuts we like, um, the, the cooler and more more immersive our, our culture is going to get. So thank you, too. No, I'm, I'm just glad I can bring people together that love something so passionately and they love Power Rangers. And you guys are giving them that. You guys are giving them Power Rangers, and that's fantastic. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Alrighty, I think we're we're almost at my my time limit. Um, anything else you want to add uh, add to the program here? Well, from the uh, toy side of things, I'd say definitely stay tuned. We've 
revealed what we can at this point, but we have so much, so much more coming down the pike. Uh, Power Month in August of this year, and basically the whole fall season is going to have tons of awesome items that we can't talk about yet, but we definitely think everyone's going to be very <laughs> excited about. So definitely stay tuned for more. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> I was gonna say with the entertainment, you know, our, our mid-season finale is Saturday. Um, so lots more to come this fall. And we will be revealing quite a bit um, more stuff. So I, I don't wanna tease, but lots of great stuff to come um, this summer even. That That's fantastic. And of course, uh, Dino Fury is just great. It is just great. Um, are we gonna see uh you know dino fury figures in the bigger lightning collection at some point i mean that just makes sense we, we can't confirm <laughs> anything at this point but you know it just they're they're cool figures we're trying to be completionist with lightning collection eventually yeah and I, i'll go to touch on it real quick and then I'll, I'll let you guys go i swear um one of the things i like about the lightning collection is that it's not just a wave of one series and then a wave of another series. I like the the just grab bag of different series and different figures. And hey, this time you guys are gonna get this guy and this guy and this guy. I, I like that because it lets people stay in for a longer period of time and it lets people really look forward to those other re releases down the road. And like, oh, I'm finally gonna get you know, my Dino Blue that he's playing with right now. You know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know that that's where you get that excitement from. And I really like that about the line because it keeps you just waiting and hungry for more. You guys are doing a great job at Hasbro. Thank you very much. On behalf of all Power Ranger fans, thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> all right. See you guys later. Thanks. Thank you. Please follow us on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and like and subscribe to these videos so we can keep bringing you such great content. Oh, so. Uh, no one the Thank, well, you. thank you for having us. Thank you.